Well, first of all, we are. Uh, the Omicron variant, uh, as you know, has arrived uh, in Canada. There's a couple of cases that have been identified in the province of Ontario. Uh, we are right now doing uh, what we need to do, which is uh, ensuring that everyone who's arrived from uh, the African countries in question uh, receives a PCR test. That's between 900 and 1,000 across Canada, just over 200, I believe 204 in British Columbia. So they're all getting a PCR test. Every traveler uh, in our uh, whole genome sequencing system who, uh, who tests positive, who's come back to the country, uh, that, that sample has uh, gone through whole genome sequencing. We've done about 100,000 whole genome sequences since uh, the beginning of the pandemic, which is more than anywhere else, and we have the most expansive program. So all of that work is being done. In addition to that, as you know, we have um, a very uh, a significantly advanced uh, booster dose vaccination program. Over 400,000 people have received their booster doses, more than 40% of all those over 70, and we're going to be continuing on with that program. You'll recall a, b approximately six months ago on May 31st, the number of um, second doses completed was about 190,000. So this is substantially advanced on that, and we're just going to continue to do that work. It's very important that when pe where people are invited to get their booster dose, they get it, and that work is happening right now. In addition, last week we did about 116,000 doses over the seven days. The vast majority of those were booster doses, but also about 18,000 second doses and about 1,000 a day or 7,000 first doses. So uh, the vaccination campaign continues, and as you know, uh, today was the first day um, where children will be immunized between 5 and 7. Uh, 5 and 11, I should say. But I didn't, so there is no plan to alter the booster program in order to bump more people up to the line. Like, just say, you know, we're not going to wait the 6-8 month gap. We're going to start boostering now to prevent from the variant. Like, there's, there, there's nothing that tells you that's necessary or, or there's no, um, the province is not considering uh, that sort of strategy. Uh, that's right. I mean, everything is always considered up. What I'm saying to you, though, is six months ago we had up about 188,000 second doses, and right now we have more than 400,000 third doses, which tells you that particularly amongst those most vulnerable, there are people who are getting doses within the six-month period, and we're doing that to advance doses so we get the doses done we need in December and January when there's a lot more people who will start to become uh, eligible for booster doses. So we're, uh, we have uh, an expansive booster dose campaign. We've laid it out for everyone. I think Ontario has done the same thing. And we're continuing on to push that, uh, uh, push that program, which is important in keeping people safe. So um, we do have an extensive uh, booster dose campaign, more than 400,000 already. And that's going to continue. Uh, and uh, we'll make adjustments uh, to it if that's required. Not, not specifically. There are uh, other concerns in the province, as you know. Overall, test positivity is down, which is good news, uh, to about 3.2% uh, our uh, rolling seven-day average. Uh, it's still high in the north, although lower than it was at 14%. And so uh, the main concern continues to be, uh, as we focus on variants of concern in general, and that's a big focus of public health in BC, but on uh, activities that will take place over Christmas and the New Year's, making sure everybody sa stays safe and we continue to have uh, more and more booster doses as we start first doses for children 5 to 11. So that's our, our plan through this period. And we'll have more to say about all those issues tomorrow as we prepare for the, the, the holiday season, uh, which is obviously a time when lots of people come together. Dr. Henry will be speaking to that directly. And uh, so nothing's, no specific response to this variant of concern right now in terms of measures. But, uh, but uh, as always, we are looking at, um, at all these issues every day, and Dr. Henry will have more to say about that tomorrow. And, and I, I'm sure that this will be a big part of the event tomorrow as well. Is there a general message to the public now about the variant of what risk it poses? Uh, what it says is that we need to continue uh, to take the actions we've been taking, to follow public health orders, to continue to wear masks in indoor public spaces, to continue to get your vaccinations when you're invited to do so at whatever age you are, 
and uh, that this has to continue to be something we do in the coming months, that we have to very much, um, uh, especially in this period, uh, be cautious and get vaccinated. And uh, that's going to continue to be the case. That's our message. The other message is that the investment we've made in whole genome sequencing puts us in a strong position to deal and assess these issues and makes us uh, world leaders in that regard. And we're going to continue to do that work. And I think ensuring that everyone uh, who tests positive, who comes, uh, who, who uh, is a traveler, who's come back to Canada essentially, uh, has their uh, sample whole genome sequence and our expansive program for that uh, helps uh, keep us protected. And finally, that this is a world pandemic. And uh, we all know this, of course. I mean, in January and February of 2020, um, the large uh, majority of people who uh, uh, were positive for COVID-19 were in one country, indeed one province in one country, that's Hubei province in China. And then it went around the world very quickly. So it tells us that what matters, what happens in South Africa, what happens in Botswana, what happens in Lesotho, what happens in Germany matters here and that we need uh, not just a provincial response and a national response, but a world response to the COVID-19 pandemic. And that means getting everyone vaccinated in the world, not just uh, um, people in BC. And it matters to people in BC that people get vaccinated everywhere in the world. Uh, you mentioned whole genome thing a little bit earlier. Like, is the plan to analyze every COVID positive sample that has been No, what we do is uh, we... Uh, we do both uh, a very significant thing uh, in the first week of every month, I think it's 100%, and then we sample after that. But we do more than anyone else. It's about 100,000 whole genome sequences so far. And in particular cases, and that includes all travelers, uh, so people coming from outside the country, uh, if there's a positive case there, whole gen genome sequencing is done as a matter of course. So uh, we're going to continue to have, I think, um, uh, the most expansive, we have the most expensive capacity for whole genome sequencing, and that's a credit to the people at the BCCDC. And so we're going to continue with that, absolutely. Uh, I'm just taking a look at my notes before we switch over to kids' um, vaccines quickly, because I'm also you know, talking to Dr. Henry in about an hour. Yeah, about so you'll have that, and I'm sure she'll have something to say about the other thing, too, You never, uh, if, you, if she's asked, I'm sure. Yeah, I think it's about 104,000 today, uh, and we'll provide those numbers uh, going forward. And so what you're seeing today is invitations going out in a regular way. And people are, are used to this, but maybe not with this large number of people on the day before where every hour a certain number of invitations go up. And we're off and running with the 5 to 11 uh, vaccination uh, campaign and uh, ask people to be patient. And uh, when they are invited to be uh, uh, their children are invited to be vaccinated to to um, to register and get an appointment. Um, I have one more on the variants, and I have one more on COVID, and then we'll say goodbye for now and talk tomorrow. Okay. Um, I, the BC CDC changed its policy, I think, a few months ago, where they would no longer provide information to the public if there was a possible exposure on a flight. Is the recommendation going to be to go back to informing people? Well, I think that changed uh, the approach of uh, a number of provinces changed actually before ours. And so um, the publication of that data, I think it was the middle of November changed. I don't think there's any plans to make changes now, but that's something, uh, those issues are always things that can be considered, absolutely. Why is it not, um, why are we not inundated with parents with information to get their kids booked? 
Okay. Um, the invitations are going to go out. They go out uh, in the thousands. I think it's approximately 8,000 an hour. And those invitations are going to go out. And when parents get the invitations, they'll have the opportunity to book. This is, these are the first hours of the campaign. And uh, the, the uh, spots to get vaccinated, the, the, um, to get registered, and appointments are, uh, uh, will be out there. And people have an opportunity to get vaccinated. I know that uh, there is um, uh, this anxiety to get there as soon as possible. And uh, this, we, we have, though, I think, and I think this has been shown over the last um, nine months, a very effective, effective vaccine registration system that's going to be applied to children. And we're going to go through this in a rigorous and continuous fashion. And so there's going to be some frustration on day one, of course, because everyone would like to get it, uh, who uh, is registered, would like to get their uh, appointment right away. It's going to come. And I, I just ask people to, to be patient. And, uh, and uh, we're moving forward across the health authorities to get, uh, to get children vaccinated. And at the same time, continue with booster shots. I think there was about uh, 85,000 of those last week. And continue with second doses. I think there were about 18,000 of those last week. And continue with first doses. I think there were about 7,000 of those last week. So all of those things are happening at once. Plus, I think we'll, we'll either have or will when we announce tomorrow. Uh, it's gone over the million mark in terms of influenza vaccines. So uh, this work is happening in a sustained way. Many pharmacies for the uh, adult vaccines are, uh, have added capacity for COVID-19 vaccination to their system. So I ask people to be patient. And uh, this is what we've been doing for months and months and months. And this is what we're doing with children 5 to 11. And I understand uh, very much the anxiety of parents to get going. And uh, invitations are going out. Well, th th this is this is good news. This is good news. But you know, I th I think that, uh, as you know, we go through this in a rigorous and systematic way, and uh, and uh, and we're very pleased that so many parents are interested, um, so interested in getting, uh, uh, ensuring their children uh, are vaccinated. And uh, 104,000 registrations. We expect that number to grow now that vaccines are available and appointments are being booked. And uh, we're just going to continue to do this work. Uh, Dr. Ballum said it's our expectation that everyone in this cohort, 5 to 11, will have at least had the opportunity to be vaccinated by the end of January, so between now and then, over the next two months. And at the same time, we're doing all of these other vaccinations. And as you know from our booster doses, that we started to do a very significant number of uh, second doses in June and July. So there's a lot of people who are going to start to fall into that category and become available for booster doses as well. And so that's happening as well. So this is an extensive, extraordinary vaccination campaign that in BC has been more successful than just about anywhere in the world, I think. And I'm uh, optimistic about uh, that with, um, with children 5 to 11 that we're going to do that as well. And as Dr. Henry and Dr. Balma said, also special attention is being made about the experience. Our public health uh, nurses, uh, doctors, our uh, pharmacy teams, our immunizers across the healthcare system have a lot of experience with children. This is the bread and butter of what they do, and I think the experience will be very positive for, for children, uh, albeit that it's, a, that it's a shot. Okay, perfect. Okay, take care. Bye.